So using NoHang lets us solve various problems with main processes and child processes, but it's kind of a shame that we have to keep asking whether the child is done because the kernel knows very well whether the child is completed because it has to move the child into a zombie state, for example. It would be nice if there was a way for the kernel to signal to the main process that something has happened, and in fact such a thing is possible. Uh, it's called signals. Signal is a general mechanism in Unix to push information to a process. That's as opposed to, you could say, that a process pulls information when it makes this call to get some particular piece of information. Signals make sense when we have concurrent processes. Uh, it can be two different programs that are running and, as two different processes, or it can be the kernel implicitly running uh, concurrently with the main process. When one of those processes sends a signal to the other one, then that signal is eventually handled um, which splices in some handling code in the middle of that other process's normal control flow. This should remind you a lot of interrupt handling, uh, handling exceptions at the CPU level. It's very similar, but this is happening at the user process level uh, managed by the OS instead of by the CPU. So the, uh, the interesting part here is that a program can send a signal uh, to another one. One of the hard things about signals is that there's very little guarantee about when the signal was received compared to when it was sent. Unless there's, you know, if these two processes are completely independent, then these dots, there's no way to know which one actually happens before the other. There's no constraint on them, and so the signal can be received on the uh, receiving process at any time. The other complication, which is the main power, is that the signal handling code is spliced into the middle of some normal control flow. So it's almost as if the signal handle is concurrent with the main process. In fact, it's close enough that we tend to think of signal handlers as being concurrent with the process. Like exceptions at the CPU level, signals are defined by numbers. So here's just a selection of some common signals. SIGINT is a signal that a shell sends to a process when you type control C. Uh, sig kill is the one that's sent when you use kill-9, but kill by itself sends sig term by default. When a child process terminates, then the parent is sent sig child. That's exactly the signal we were using as motivation. And there are some others, like when a timer expires, you can create a timer. When the timer runs out, then the, uh, the kernel will send a signal to your process to say the timer expired. The way that you receive a signal is install a signal handler. Again, this is very much like the way the kernel installs an exception handler at the CPU level. Uh, the function, you know, the, the system call to install the signal handler is called signal. You give signal the number of the signal that you want to handle, and then a function that just receives that, handle, that signal as an argument uh, to handle the signal. And when you set the signal handler, that's specific to the current process. There are some predefined handlers that you can use as a handler argument. If you use sig ign, that means that whenever the signal is received, it's just discarded. It's like supplying a function that does nothing. There's also sig dfl, which stands for the default handler for a given signal. When you use sig dfl, the actual handler installed depends on the signal number. Um, for example, the default handler for sig kill or for sig int is to terminate the process. Sig kill, uh, it turns out you can't change the handler for that, and that's why there's always a way to kill off a process by sending it a sig kill. On the other side, on the sending side, the uh, system call for sending a signal is called kill, even though it doesn't always send the kill signal. The general signal handling function is still called kill. Uh, it can send any signal number that you want, and it sends it to any process that you're allowed to send a signal to. For example, um, the kernel effectively uses its own kill function to send sig child to a parent process when the child process dies. Um, when you type control C in a shell, the shell is using the kill function to send sig int to the, the process that's currently running. There is also that kill command on the command line. Uh, if you give it just a process ID, then by default it sends sig term. If you use dash nine, as we said, it sends sig kill. Kill accepts any signal, actually, so uh, it can do that just because the kill process, uh, rather the kill program, is just using the kill sig uh, system call. 